listeners, Hawaii reaches the screen. Hawaii. Bodo, Norway. Stowbridge, Massachusetts. Making motion pictures today can be a global project. One film, Hawaii, spanned 12,000 miles and used three continents to tell its story. The project began 150 miles above the Arctic Circle. From the Norwegian fishing village of Bodo, ships sailed into the North Atlantic to film the first action sequences. miles to the west, Old Sturbridge, Massachusetts, a colorful recreation of a 19th century New England town. The place suddenly came alive with crowds gathered to watch Academy Award winner Julie Andrews and Max von Sydow work with director George Roy Hill on the opening dramatic sequences. The location had a sharp impact on Julie Andrews. Sturbridge was so authentic that I felt like my soul just sort of blossomed. It was that marvelous damp air on the skin and it was cool and green and uh, it was like being in an English spring again. Max von Sydow tells of his reaction. I have mainly been a stage actor through my career in a dark theater and it's a wonderful thing to be allowed to work outdoors and it also gives a wonderful flavor to the part you're playing. James Michener moved with the company to wide-ranging locations as his story took shape on film. It is here that Jerusha and Abner Hale began their classic courtship before they sailed halfway around the world to an adventurous new life. As a global venture, this motion picture involved complex logistics. Academy Award-winning designer Dorothy Jeekins supervised preparation in Hong Kong of costumes to be used during the long months of shooting in the Hawaiian Islands. I fell in love with Hawaii. I thought it was beautiful and wild and masses of open spaces which I adore and I don't think I'll ever forget it. There was Sturbridge all cool and New England-ish and suddenly there was Hawaii hot and colorful and vital. It was quite a change. first arrived, of course, it was just a strip of sandy beach and a few thatched huts. Two years of research went into this recreation, a flawlessly accurate replica of the Hawaii of the 1800s. This was just one setting. The company ranged the islands, shooting for the film extended as far as the South Seas. When the construction was completed, the movie makers came ashore. 
Among them were 1,500 descendants of the original native settlers. They took part in the big scenes. I didn't realize what an action part it really was. I've been knocked down by the queen of the island, thrown overboard from a ship, bitten by a shark. It was physically sometimes very exhausting. work brought a change in mood and atmosphere, a fresh interplay between place and performers. Julie rehearsed with Richard Harris, who plays Rafer Hawksworth, the captain of a whaling ship. The task of transforming Michener's huge novel into a motion picture was supervised by Walter Mirisch, the producer. He began the job in 1959. For him, shooting was a rewarding climax. A key night sequence at Makua Beach. White sailors, forbidden to mingle with native girls, set fire to the village. This was a difficult scene, very carefully timed. and I was kind of muttering under my breath, Georgia, isn't it time that we put me out? And finally, everybody realized that the flames had gone a little too high. I don't think I have ever been more scared in my life. I went totally silent. The company moved to other vivid locations in the islands. One was the setting for a wedding ceremony. The location itself suggested action that could not have been anticipated when the script was written. Ideas were kicked around in fresh air forums. Then they came to life before the cameras. <laughs> Seven years in preparation, three years in production, filmed on a set half a world wide. This is the meaning of a global motion picture project. This is the new world of the movie makers. To watch the dawn in those islands is really rather lovely and the sea was always just outside my back window and it looked very pretty every morning. I would love to go back one day. Thank you.